My name is Jo Keppel and I was the study coordinator for the first in man study for MIS 416 um, here in New Zealand and I looked after um, quite a number of patients going on to the study. So we had two different parts of the study, we had a shorter dosing schedule and a longer dosing schedule and uh, my responsibility was um, the overall care and management of the patients and coordination of the staff involved in their care. Um, to ensure that the patients were safe and well looked after throughout the study. Um, the first contact that most patients get with the site will be a, a telephone call from one of the study coordinators and in this case it was usually me. So during that interview I would tell them about the study, what sort of things would be expected of them and, uh, and we would do a brief review of whether they were going to meet the criteria for the study and a discussion about their MS and following that you, we would invite them into the study facility so that they could see where they, where they would be seen. Um, for our study we, we saw patients in an inpatient facility so we had beds and lazy boys and a patient, re patient recreation area for them to be in. So introducing them to the physical um, location of where they were going to be. Um, and reassuring them that the, the, the screening procedure was you know, a bit like seeing your GP, but you know, probably four or five times longer. So it uh, involves taking a, an extensive medical history, um, a physical examination, a number of blood tests, um, some vital signs, so blood pressure, pulse. Um, we usually like to take a tracing of your heart using an ECG machine, which is completely painless. They, we attach little electrodes to your chest and, and look at your heart from different areas, but it's completely painless. Um, and then because it's a neurological study there's usually a, a number of neurological tests so the neurologist will see you um, normally there's an eye examination and you know, have a quick look in your ears listen to your chest and then there's a, a number of ne specialized neurological tests that get done um, and depending on which part of the study you're in whether you're in the screening phase or in the active phase those can differ those are all completely non-invasive tests so they will be things like a timed walk, um, a test of grip strength, um, perhaps a maths problem, um, a thing called um, a nine hole peg test where you place pegs into holes and all of these things will be done consistently throughout the trial and the results of doing them before the study, before you have the investigational medic medication and the results of doing the same tests in the same environment after you've had the medication will be done consistently throughout the trial. So the things that you do at screening will be the things that you will do throughout the study as well. There's also usually a number of extra screening tests which may be done outside the facility. So you may be asked to go for a CT scan or an MRI scan and that's completely normal. It's, it's, um, it's a normal test but it can be um, quite a, an overwhelming experience for some people and particularly if you feel claustrophobic. So it's important that you discuss with your doctor beforehand whether you would like some sedation, whether you'd like somebody to accompany you, whether you'd like to go and visit the facility. But the important thing about having those tests done is that the people who do those tests do them all day, every day, and they will look after you. And, and again, they're completely non-invasive tests and they don't involve any, um, any bodily procedures apart from lying and being scanned. And throughout the study, um, the results of tests that are relevant to you will be given to you. Um, that's the important thing to understand about a clinical trial. Even though we don't know what medication you're receiving, you are a participant, you're not, um, you're somebody who's taking part in the study and you're a partner in your care, so you should have access to all of your results and your doctor will discuss those with you whenever he thinks it's relevant. Okay, so once the screening has been completed and all of those tests have been evaluated and um, you've been found to be eligible for the study, um, you'd be invited in for your first treatment. Um, and that, for the first time, we like to keep a closer eye on subjects for the first, first few times that you're given the infusion, just because the possibility of a reaction to the drug is higher at those times. Um, so it's really a safety issue. But what would happen is you would come to the clinic, um, prepare to stay for up to four hours for the first visit, and there's always the possibility um, that if you're not well that you can stay longer. You know, our aim is to look after patients, not to send them home feeling unwell. So the four hours is a minimum, really. Um, but generally you come in, the nurse will check who you are and um, that you're in the right place at the right time, on the right day, for the right thing. 
um, and then introduce you to the, the other members of the team who will be looking after you. There should be a, a short explanation of what's going to happen that day and then generally the procedure of things will be you know, that they'll get you settled down, the nurse or the doctor will sit down and discuss with you and just confirm that nothing else has happened since the screening visit that would impact on the study. There's been no changes to medical history, you haven't had any recent illnesses or infections um, and that you're feeling well and you're ready to proceed. And also importantly that you have any questions that haven't previously been answered or anything you're concerned about and these are all great times to ask them. So there's usually quite a, a period of um, activity before you actually get the infusion so there'll be a, a number of safety tests so that that will include doing your blood pressure and your pulse possibly another heart tracing um, a number of bloods taken which have to be done pre-drug and that's important in terms of what's being measured in the study that we, we get a baseline so what happens in your body before you have the drug and then what happens after. So there'll be a, a number of blood tests at different points. And generally if there's going to be a serial number of blood tests taken, um, the, the site will offer you the opportunity to have a, a very small plastic cannula put in your arm. So if you particularly don't like needles, um, you can have one of those put in and that can be used for drawing serial bloods. Um, and then you may have a similar apparatus put in for the actual giving of the drug, which is given as an infusion. So it's a very small infusion given over a short period of time, so it's only given over 10 minutes. It's really given over that period just so that we can have a standard time. So we know that everybody gets the same amount of drug in the same amount of time, so the exposure curve is the same. Um, then quite often at the end of that infusion um, the line will be flushed and it may be removed or it may be kept in until the end of your stay and that's for safety so that if you do need any drugs to be given to you to manage a side effect you have um, an access point. So these are very small um, plastic pipes that we put in. Um, they, they're put in with a metal introducer but we can very often give um, a local anaesthetic or a local anaesthetic cream if you're bothered about that and that's, if you want that, the best thing to do is to ask for that when you arrive and say can I have some local anaesthetic and then it's a very painless procedure and very easy to manage. Um, the infusion itself is completely painless. Um, it doesn't hurt to when the drug goes in. You're probably not even going to be aware of it to be honest. Um, and then really very little happens over the next few hours to be honest. Um, generally what we find is the side effect profile tends to show slightly later. So somewhere between 4 and 12 hours you may start to experience some side effects. But the important thing in this study is that to maintain, maintain the blind everybody's getting uh, a pre-dose of paracetamol and that's to make sure that your side effects don't unblind the study uh, to anybody, to you or the, pay, or the doctors or the nurses, and also to make any side effects manageable because if you pre-dose patients those side effects are, are less onerous. So once the infusion's finished, generally you'll be kept in an area where you can rest, um, you can eat and drink freely, there's no restriction on that, and the nurses and doctors will pop in and see how you are. Um, you probably will be in a facility where you'll be observed the whole time and if you feel unwell it's very important that you report that immediately to the staff looking after you and you may think that it's something of no consequence that it's something normal but anything that changes from the time before you have the infusion in to the time after you have the infusion it's very important that you report that to the staff so that they can monitor that and determine whether it's related to the drug in any way. Um, so Probably after the infusion there'll be a number of um, investigate. Uh, um, sorry, <laughs> start that again. <laughs> after your infusion you'll probably have a number of evaluations done again. So probably you know a set of vital signs, so blood pressure and a pulse. Um, there'll probably be some post-dose bloods as well and that's a very important part of the study as well. And there may be additional neurological tests um, just depending on which phase of the study you're in and which visit you're at. And then if you're feeling well and um, there have been no side effects that the site are concerned about and your doctor and nurse are happy for you to go home, you can go home. And the important thing when you get home is to rest and not to think that you have to charge around doing everything that you were going to do anyway. It really for the first 24 hours it's best to rest. Um, take paracetamol if you need to, maintain your hydration and eat well and make sure you have somebody just to keep an eye on you and if you start to feel unwell at any stage 
you must contact the study site immediately. So subsequent visits to the um, clinical trial centre will be shorter, so your first visit is generally four hours, and as we discussed earlier, that's really because we expect the side effects to be slightly more um, noticeable in the early stages. And then as the safety profile of the drug um, and your tolerance to it improves, um, those visits will get shorter. So the second visit is two hours, third visit probably an hour, and then post that, as long as you're dealing well with everything, the visits will probably be post um, the infusion, will, you'll probably stay at the centre for about 30 minutes. It's important through all of these visits and when you'll be coming weekly for a year. It's important to remember that any changes between your visits should be reported to the centre and that you should just pick up the phone and talk to them if you're concerned at any time. But generally what we found in the first study was that the side effects um, improved as time went on and they got less and less. So the, the, the most marked side effects were seen with the first few doses and then they became much more manageable. And I think patients understood how to manage them and understood how to manage themselves so that they would go home, have a cup of tea, put their feet up and watch telly and that they would understand that you know the first 24 hours were a period where they shouldn't really try to attempt too much. Um, but then subsequent to that their recovery was pretty good. And um, they were, you know, hopefully back to normal after that.